In this tutorial, we're going to take the vectors we created in the companion video to this. I'm going to show you how to assign toolpaths to them to create the part that you can see on the screen here. Going to begin by doing a little administration with the vectors, grouping some of them together to make selection easier. Then we're going to go into the toolpaths and we're going to create a pocket toolpath between this inner border and the text. We're then going to create a texturing toolpath in order to create this effect you can see in the background here. We're going to drill the holes in the corners of our nameplate and then finally create a cutout toolpath in order to machine this and cut it out from the material. So let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software. If you've just worked through the vector drawing part of this tutorial, you can continue with the design that you've created or you may need to open the file that we've got saved in the project folder. So we'll come over to open an existing file and from the project folder C01 we'll open nameplate-vector.crv. So here's the vectors we created in the um, previous tutorial. Now what we're going to do is create some toolpaths on this. Before we do that, what I'd like to do is just um, group together some of the data to make it easier to select. So first of all, I'm going to select this inner border here, and then I'm going to shift and select the text, and I'm going to come over and group those together so they act as a single object when I select on them. So I'm going to click on the icon here to group selected objects. Next, I'm going to individually select each hole. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold the shift key down to add to my selection, clicking on the other three. And then again, I'm going to group those. This time, instead of using the icon, what I may want to do is either right mouse click and choose the Group Objects option, or I could hit G on the keyboard to group them as well. So again, they've been grouped. So now that when I select on one of those, all the other three are selected as if they're a single object. This is going to be helpful to me when I start selecting things to calculate the toolpaths. So let's now go over to the Toolpaths tab. So I'm going to click on this icon which will close the drawing tab and open the toolpaths tab for me. Here on the toolpaths uh, area of the interface on the right hand side the first thing I need to do is check and set up the material. So I'm going to come to this set button here under material setup, click on that and we're going to double check all the parameters are correct for the way that we want to machine this. So my material Z0 is set for the top of the block, thickness of the material is half an inch, the datum position or the XY0 position is in the lower left hand corner and here you can see we've got um, the rapid gap set to 0.2 of an inch and my home position set to 0, 0 and 0.5 of an inch above the material. I'm happy with all those values so I'm going to hit OK should be noted that the values we're going to use within here are um, just default values to give you an example of how to set up a toolpath. It's very important that you check and use appropriate values if you're planning to actually cut your own version of this to make sure they're suitable for your machine, tooling, material and all other aspects of the setup to ensure that what you're doing is safe. Here, the first thing I'd like to do is pocket between this inner border shape and my text. Now, if you remember, we grouped this together, so I just have to click on one of these and it will select both of those entities. Now, I'm going to come over and click on the icon to create a pocket toolpath. And within here, I'm going to have a start depth of 0, a cut depth of 0.125. So, a one eighth of an inch we're going to cut into this and pocket around the text and in between this uh, curved rectangle. The tool that I want to use is a one eighth inch end mill. So I'm going to hit select and you can see at the moment in my tool database I don't have a one eighth end mill. So what I may want to do is create a new tool here. I'm going to choose from the tool types the end mill option and I'm going to change the diameter to be 0.125. So I make sure that's 0 0.125, 1 eighth of an inch, and check that the name has also updated here. Pass depth for this tool I'm going to set to be 1 eighth of an inch and step over at 0 0.05 or 40%. Spindle, feed, and plunge I'm going to keep as the default values we've got set here. I'm happy with those as reasonable values for what I'm planning to do. I'm going to hit apply. And you can see where that's added that in the list. 
and what I may want to do is just adjust its position in the list by dragging that up and letting go of it here. So now I've got the eighth, the quarter and the half inch tool. In this case there's my eighth inch tool, I'm going to hit apply and OK. So there I've got a one eighth inch end mill selected. I'm going to do uh, an offset toolpath in this case I think. I could also do a raster pattern if I wanted. And we'll just call that toolpath pocket and go ahead and hit calculate. So there we can see the toolpath drawn for me in the 3D view. Automatically the software has gone from the 2D to the 3D view here to show me that toolpath and it started the preview toolpath menu here. What this does is allow me to choose different materials depending what I'd like to preview this in. So maybe I'll pick uh, cherry wood to look at this in. And then I can come down and I can do things like choose different colours um, for the area I'm going to machine. In this case, let's just go ahead and hit preview, selected toolpath. And there we can see that's been machined out. If we do want to make it a little clearer the area we've cut, then I may want to choose a toolpath colour for that particular toolpath. And from the drop down menu, instead of the no fill option, I'm going to choose this dark red. Okay, so there we can see the area that's being machined by my pocket toolpath down to a depth of one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and close the preview menu. So now let's go back to the 2D view and check to make sure our vectors are still selected that we want to use for the texture toolpath. So I'm going to click on the tab here to go into the 2D view. We can see that those vectors are still selected. If yours are not, then make sure to click on them. I'm going to come over here and choose the option for the texturing toolpath. For this, I would like to use a 1 8 inch ball nose tool, a round ended tool. So I'm going to hit select and from the tool database, I'm going to choose ball nose and I'm going to select the 0.125, the 1 8 round or ball nose tool. Just take the default values and hit OK. Now remember we've already pocketed this area down so the start depth for my texturing toolpath is going to be 0.125 or 1 8th of an inch. Now I'm going to enter the values which will create my random texture with this tool. Now because the texturing is kind of a subjective thing you may need to play around with the values you use to get ones that are acceptable for what you want to do. In this case, we're going to type in some values which uh, I think are going to work because I've been experimenting with it. So the max cut depth, I'm going to go with 0 0.03. The max cut length, I'm going to set to 0.5 of an inch. Max overlap is going to be 20%. Step over is going to be 0 0.05. And we'll just leave the angle at 0 and go ahead and hit calculate. Now, if we preview this, we're going to see that we've got a problem. And I've deliberately done this to show you um, what something that you'll need to take account of with the texturing. Now notice when we preview that, we can see that the texture toolpath has eaten into the edges of my lettering, all the way around here and all the way around the edge of the border. And that's because when we create a texture toolpath, the center of the tool goes to the outline of our vector. So in effect, the half of our tool is overlapping all the way around the part here. We can adjust for that in the texture toolpath menu if we close the preview here, come down to where we've got the texture toolpath, I can select it, I can choose the icon to edit that toolpath, and down the bottom here we've got this option for the boundary vector offset. If I set that to be a little bigger than the radius of my tool, then it will just make that whole texture toolpath that little bit smaller so it doesn't cut into the edges of the um, shapes that I've got there. So I'm going to put in a boundary vector offset of 0 0.07 of an inch. That's a little bit over the radius of our ball nose tool that we're using. And I'm going to hit calculate and that will recalculate that toolpath. Now at this point, what's important is I need to reset the preview. Okay, so now we can come back. I can preview my first toolpath. So we'll preview the pocket again. We'll take the texture toolpath and I'm going to change this so its toolpath color is the same color, the dark red color here as the pocket. And then I'm going to click on preview selected toolpath to look at that. And now if we zoom in, 
uh, which I can do in the 3D view just by holding the right mouse button down and moving the mouse uh, away and towards me, we can see how that texture toolpath has been created using those parameters, but now we've got this halo around each of our parts because we've required the tool to not go all the way to the edge to stop it from um, eating into those uh, vertical edges that we've got within our part here. So there I've just closed the preview menu again to come back to the standard toolpath tab and come into an ISO view in the 3D view by clicking on this icon here. Now we're going to go to the 2D view again and select our holes to create our drilling toolpath. Now rather than just go and click on the tab here to go back to the 2D view, it may be easier for me to work by splitting the screen so I can see the 2D view and the 3D view simultaneously. So I'm going to come up to the view drop down menu here, say tile windows horizontal, and because this is a horizontally oriented part, that makes the most sense so I can see the 2D view at the top and the 3D view at the bottom here. If I want, I can right mouse click and push the mouse away to zoom in or left mouse click in order to rotate this around. Next we're going to select uh, one of the circles in the corner here and because these vectors are grouped together, if you remember we grouped them, all four of them are selected when I click on one of them. Now we're going to come over to the drilling toolpath option under the toolpath operations. I'm going to choose to drill through the material to its uh, to the base of the material, so that's 0.5 inches, half an inch, and we're going to select the 1/8 inch end mill to do our drill holes here. I could use any size tool; it doesn't have to correspond to the circles that I've got selected here. The drilling toolpath will always just drill the centre of the vectors that you've got selected, so I can use a bigger or smaller tool if I uh, preferred. If I want to, I can use PEC drilling so the tool will be retracted in order to clear chips from it as it um, works its way down to the full depth of cut. In this case, I'm not going to apply that. I'm just going to go ahead and take the default values, hit calculate, and there we can see my toolpath on the screen. And I'm able to preview that selected toolpath and we'll see the four drill holes appear in the corners there. So let's close the preview toolpath form and for our last operation I want to select the outside vector and we're going to do a profile cutout toolpath around this. So with that vector selected I'm going to choose the option to create a profile toolpath from under the toolpath operations. I'm going to put in a cut depth which is the same as the thickness of our material of 0.5 of an inch. I'm going to hit select and choose the 1 8 inch M mill tool again. The main reason I'm choosing that tool is so that I don't need to um, change the tool between the drilling and this cutout toolpath, assuming those tools are compatible with those operations. For machining these vectors, I want to machine around the outside of them. You can see there are options to machine on the inside or on the vector itself. And in this case, what I'd like to do is add tabs to the toolpath. So I'm going to check this box to add tabs. I'm going to put in a length of a quarter of an inch and the thickness for these tabs of 0.1 of an inch will make them reasonably substantial. I'm going to click on the button to edit tabs. I'm going to ask the software to put a constant number of four tabs in here. Click on the add tabs option. Once it's created those four tabs for me, it's possible for me to move them by clicking on them and dragging them around the outline of my part. So in this case, I'll put one uh, pretty much at kind of the north, uh, east, south, west um, sides of my part here. I'm going to hit close and we'll just leave the name as is and hit calculate. If we maximize the 3D view, we can see the toolpath. If you look carefully, you can see this is where the tab is going to be left. So that last pass is lifting up and going to leave me a tab of material that my cutout part is still going to be attached to the stock with to stop it from releasing prematurely. So now I can say preview that selected toolpath. We can see how that's going to look. I can see the position of those tabs and double check everything looks as I expect it to before we save the toolpaths and output them to our CNC. So if we're happy with everything, we could now close this preview and we could go ahead and use the save toolpath option. 
choose whichever toolpath we wanted to save, choose an appropriate post processor from the list that we've got within the software here, and then hit the save toolpath, provide that toolpath a name and save it, and you're ready to transfer that over to your CNC machine or into your control software that drives your CNC machine. So before we conclude this tutorial, let's take a moment to review some of the things we've looked at. We began by bringing the vectors in that we created in the companion video and grouping together some of them to make it easier to select objects such as the four holes in the corner of the design. Then we came across to the toolpath tab and we began by calculating a pocket toolpath into the background of the part. We then complemented that by machining a texture toolpath into the bottom of that pocket we drilled the full holes to mount our nameplate in the corners and then finally did a profile toolpath in order to cut our part out, leaving tabs on it in order to hold it in place um, to make sure it didn't prematurely release. Now to finish, let's go ahead and save this file. So I've got to file, save as and within the project folder we'll save this and we'll call it nameplate-tp to indicate that it has toolpaths in it and that's in the C01 project folder if you wanted to find this and take a look at it. And that concludes this particular tutorial.